Hello, welcome to beautiful Estonia Tallinn. My name is Gunnar Larsen and I got invited by the F18 Association of Estonia to come and train these, uh, these Formula 18s. Um, it, we, will, we will do everything we can to make them better and hopefully things will work out perfectly. The weather is going to be looking great. Uh, we will see uh, light winds, some more wind and on Sunday it looks to be good as well. So let's see how we go. So, it's the uh, afternoon, everybody, well, welcome everybody. Yesterday afternoon I had some questions on, uh, on uh, tacking the boat. And uh, what we will be needing is a trapeze harness. Do we have a trapeze harness somewhere nearby? Maybe that I fit on over this. So I can show the sequence of... Uh, of uh, attack for the skipper and uh, I will invite the crew to uh, to help dry tech uh, with me on the boat. Um, control is as we all know really nice to have on uh, on the F18 and um, I will show you some tips and tricks on what I think is the easiest way to uh, to go through a tech without a moving boat, but uh, we just have to do... Thank you. It's nice and wet. <laughs> the way it should be. Best way of uh, showing it is to actually, actually show it. Um, I need somebody to be sitting on the other side of the boat, because I will be hanging here. And I need somebody to be sitting on this side, so you can still see it. I will start from this side. And uh, I've seen some of you struggle what to do with uh, the sheet and what to do with uh, the stick when you are attacking. And uh, I will show you how simple it actually can be. This needs some, uh, some cleaning, should go a little bit better, but um, okay, interpiece. First of all, uh, position on the boat. I've been pointing it out to a couple of you um, that uh, my idea of, uh, of, of a lot of you is actually that you guys are standing too far to the front. I'm the skipper now on this boat and I've seen uh, regular uh, guys, the skipper standing here, that means that the crew is standing somewhere here, right? And um, that's, it depends a little bit on your body weight, on the total team weight, but um, quite normal as a good standard is that the crew, when you are double trapezing, it has, it has its left feet when you sail on this tack uh, near the shroud. Okay, so that this is your benchmark. And the skipper then automatically will be standing somewhere here. So the crew here on the left, skipper behind that. And that has a lot to do with the balance in the boat between the rudders and the dagger boards. As you can see, the crew is uh, slightly in front of the dagger board, so no further to the front and a very good benchmark to see if you are too much to the front or too little to the back is uh, to have the bow of the boat underwater this much in general. So what I mean is you, if you look at the leeward bow on this side, it's a, a good five centimeters underwater, right? And uh, when there is uh, flat water, it is easy to see. When there's big waves or choppy water, it is, uh, it is uh, less simple to see, but then you take the average. Because that's the ideal bow line for the infusion, and that's when you can have most use of the hull, daggerboard and rudder to go as quick as possible. So, of course there is a combination, uh, again, with the mast rake, you know, the numbers that we have written on the board correspond with uh, these positions on the boat with uh, and of course when you're more heavy 
if you weigh 200 kilos together, you can still sail a Formula 18. Uh, then you have to move a little bit further to the front than when you are lighter. When you are lighter, you're moving a little bit further back than I, than I was just describing. Okay, that makes sense. Huh? Um, so that was position on the boat. Now I will go through a tack. Um, I explained to a couple of you that when you tack, um, you want to make use of steering with your sails as much as possible. We all know that if you pull in your main sheet and uh, I'm sailing this direction or actually laying still, it doesn't matter, the boat in, it tends to want to move towards the wind, right? If you pull in the main sheet on the back of the boat, the boat wants to ride up. If you leave the main sail untouched and you pull in the jib, the boat has a tendency to go down and that's the steering with the sails. So, what we're not will be doing today, but what we could do, if I do uh, individual trading, I sometimes take the rudders of the boat uh, on the water. So the, you know, you have nothing to hold on. You just click it off completely, and then you're forced to be sailing and steering with the sails. You can actually sail a Formula 18 without rudders, just uh, with the daggerboards in, not in, you know, 25 knots of breeze, but like today. It's a, it would be a perfect example of taking the rudders of the boat and try to tack and try to jibe and try to move yourself around. It's really slow, but it's a really good exercise to see that you can actually sail the boat without rudders. And these rudders are very dominant uh, and it's easy to, uh, sorry, can I just pull it? It's really easy if I want to go that way is to pull the rudder so the boat goes that way. But if you see us on a video steering, and if we are um, uh, bearing off with the boat, you see my main sheet releasing. If you see us going towards the wind, you see my mainsail coming in. If um, it's, 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 a, it's a natural instinct that we've developed and for us it's really important to work as less as possible against the forces of what the boat is, right? We are serving the boat and it's not the other way around. The boat is not serving us. So we need to make, has, we need to make sure that the boat sails as smooth as possible. So what does that mean for a tech? Can you uh, pull up the main a little? So I have some uh, sheet, yeah. Yeah, a little. Yes, yeah, perfect, thank you. Thanks. So what does that mean um, before a tack? If you are ready to tack and your crew has the sheet, okay, then um, uh, you're sailing along, along this way and uh, you first as a skipper take charge, okay, are you ready to tack? Let's prepare. Then you get the sheet from the crew. Everybody sees my hand going around like this. And it's maybe not, it doesn't look important, but it is really easy. Instead of giving it like this, then the skipper is holding the stick and you're, you know, you're struggling like this and you have to do like that. So just take it the easy way by taking it to the elastic and the next step for the crew is to make sure that uh, when the sheet is in the water is that the crew does not throw it over the daggerboard, does not throw it behind the boat, does not throw it over the sheet. Every skipper understands that if you throw your sheet, um, if the crew throws the sheet somewhere that it doesn't belong, your tech will be totally shit. Do you agree, skippers? So the crew needs to, it's, it's a really important uh, item that the crew throws the sheet where it should be and it's like on the trampoline in front of you, okay? That's the place where the, before the tech, the sheet should be thrown. Um, automatically I'm holding it on, in the jo uh, with, with, in one hand when I'm talking uh, the joystick and the and the and the sheet, and um, if we're ready to tack, then 
before we start the tech and be the tech would mean that uh, I'm pushing the rudder into this direction so we go through the wind is uh, I'm always pulling in the main sheet during sailing because the mainsail really helps pushing the boat through the wind everybody understands that eh? and from now on I want you to before you tack uh, to uh, synchronize the steering and the pulling in of the main sheet because it makes your tack quicker and easier today is light wind but in conditions of yesterday you have to be careful because if you start doing it from now on to pull in the main sheet and tack then you will be too late in the beginning you have to get used to it you will be too late on the other side because the boat is is turning that much quicker than uh, than you are used to right it's a big difference and uh, you want to turn as much as uh, as quick as possible and to keep as much speed as possible and to be sitting on the next tack with uh, the hull coming up as quick as possible okay so we go back to the to the sequence so you steer in you pull in the main sheet you take it into one hand how many of you do it like this none okay so this is uh, this is going to be the exercise for today as well and um, we've thought about um, a way of checking or, or uh, on uh, forcing you to make a lot of tags today on the course that we will be putting in so you take it in one hand so you have one hand free to do something else you need to put yourself in and what I do I don't use the I don't use it I'm not sure why this is here but I cannot reach it but uh, I think you guys are using this here right to pull yourself in so I'm going to do actually the tech as uh, as we are doing it so just going back for a second um, steering in pulling in the main sheet taking it taking it to into one hand I see you have your cleat quite low uh, you might like it um, I hate it I'd rather have it uh, one up the way we uh, supply it so it does not automatically cleat when you pull it on but that's a matter of uh, personal preference um, my sheet can never really cleat when I'm pulling it in because I just don't want to um, so uh, I got it into one hand uh, you're pulling yourself in like this what I try when we are in trapeze is to have the boat going up slightly like this to uh, you know because the weight's moving in and uh, I still have control over the sheet uh, and when I can adjust the amount of power in the boat by sliding my hand over the tiller bar with one hand it doesn't take a lot of load to have it like that so just uh, you, you know if if, if 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 we want to keep the power in the boat because there's not so much wind I do this if uh, if it becomes too much power and the boat heels over very uh, very heavily then you can always slide in the sail doesn't go up now but you all understand that it does I got one hand still free to unhook this you just what you do is um, you don't look at the hook to uh, disconnect it but you find the rope and push this from your from from yourself okay um, by sliding this in can you help me pulling this uh, like a little up by sliding this in the sail will go up yes per perfect that's perfect the next step is really important it's tricky when it's windy but you have to get used to it you actually want to make an as quick as or an as big as mar uh, possible step to the other side you cleat the mainsail for a second okay by hand uh, I think I need some room for the for the tiller um, and you see that I'm here on my knees I'm already with my foot on the other side of the boat so it's not taking little steps it's taking big steps to the other side because you want to be on the other side as quick as possible be careful for your uh, um, what what I normally do is I take this sheet to the other side these two separate so you go like this I normally do it like that 
I throw it over and I am already starting to be in control because we all feel more comfortable when we're sitting on the new side, the new windward side. And we know that if you have the sheet, if you have the rudder, and do not forget that the biggest influence on pressure is the angle of the boat compared to the wind. So the rudder is the biggest influator on the pressure, right? And in a tech, you want to release the main sheet as little as possible because once you uh, place the rudders in the direction that you're still you're still turning to go from head to wind to upwind right you have the sheet here you uh what well, i saw that a lot of um skippers give the sheet already to the crew that is one option what I like to do is uh, to keep it myself until I'm completely into peace. And because this sequence goes very fast, the amount of releasing of the sheet is very minimal, right? And I do not have to release it a lot uh, because with the control of the rudders and therefore the angle of the boat towards the wind, you just save a lot of work and a lot of energy over the day or over five days of an event. Okay? So that last little bit, the crew is already getting, re getting ready to be in trapeze. So I assume that I can already, when I move my body back, I can pull it in as much as I want. I get the hook. Uh, I'm not searching for the handle or anything. What you do is you hook in and then you push the trapeze wire out it is cleated you go outside and I still have it in one hand when I'm outside because during the moment that I'm actually moving my body weight outside I do not have to pull it because I already pulled it in and when you pulled it in and my weight my, my body weight is outside and the crew is standing in trapeze this is the moment where you say okay here you go and you continue Next step for me is when uh, the crew has the, has the main sheet, I grab, I grab the Cunningham and this is, uh, this is the way we sail here in this position. So the skipper has the Cunningham? I have the Cunningham, I control the Cunningham uh, in the upwind while the crew is, uh, is uh, using, the, using the main sheet. Anybody has a question? Yeah. So, uh, how can you, is it true that you put the rudders in some angle, or you're starting gentle and then ending sharp, or how, how is the geometry of the turn with the rudder? The only answer can be the way the boat goes the quickest through the wind, right? If it's a... Uh, heavy conditions, big seas, you need to be steering more aggressively than when there is flat water like today. If it's flat water like today, you want to be as subtle as you possibly can. So you have to be, have a fixed hand, you from this side, make a tack, push the rudder, and during, uh, during the tack, you actually try to, like I'm sliding in, it's still in, an, in the same angle, it's still the same angle and now it's probably when I'm sitting here it's becoming more straight but still bearing down and um, so you want to have it as as fluid as possible to keep as much speed in the, in the, in the turn during uh, during the tag so again and now I will do it uh, So uh, now in a little bit of a quicker way, uh, the crew, I've got the Cunningham here. Okay, I'm letting the, let go of the Cunningham, click, Cunningham loose, grab it like this. Crew throws it over my foot. If, if something like this happens on your foot and you're trying to tag, your tag is shit. If, it, uh, if it's thrown overboard, your tag is shit. If it's thrown over the daggerboard, your tag is shit. 
it is this is a really critical and important uh, moment of any tech to have it like perfectly laying somewhere over there where it's not in the way okay got the sheet sorry about that <laughs> i got the sheet put it in one hand i go in i steer um, what i forget now to tell is uh, to pull in a little bit of main sheet to uh, to turn you make, uh, make a big step you clean it you uh, already put the tiller in the place where you want to go you take the main sheet with you you pull the main sheet in get the hook on pull out do it like this again what i don't like is that it's cleated automatically on our boat it, it's not um give the give the the main sheet here under no, no 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 i normally give it under yeah because the crew is uh, standing here when you're into peace anyway um, I get uh, our Cunningham sits on the trapeze of the crew. So if the crew, if the trapeze of the crew is being pulled out, the Cunningham automatically sits in front of me, so I can grab it, and we uh, we continue. Why do you grab the Cunningham? Sorry. Why do you grab the Cunningham? To be able to uh, adjust when uh, when needed. Okay. So if, uh, if, if we sail into a, a lull, which is a low wind area, you have to release the Cunningham uh, before you are actually in the lull because you need the pressure uh, to be have the sail to be able to go up in the Cunningham and uh, in the lull. And when the, when, the, when the gust hits again and the wind comes back, you just slightly pull it in. And it, this is the main engine and the Cunningham is the fine tune. Okay, this is uh, skipper stuff, uh, now crew stuff, I think I need a crew to be helping me, does anybody volunteer as a crew? I can be, it's uh, no reason <coughs> to enough to make this system better. Uh, so yeah, 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 for sure. Um, well. You need a, a 12 meter. It's a red boat. You, if this is not a, a continuous system, um, the line goes uh, through here. There's a little uh, rope here with a little ring. And when the piece goes out, it's, 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 it's a continuous system. So this, this goes into the beam and it's completely around. So you have to. But uh, also with the. Uh, Rubber. No, no, no rubber. But it, the system on the inside is a little bit different. There is, a, I we have drawings on the on the in in Nakra to show you how it's okay. actually done. Yeah. Very good. So you uh, during a race when you have uh, a race where the left side is favorite and you keep on pulling on the same side when you come at the mark. Yeah, yeah. Then you don't run out of the line. Yeah, I understand, but uh, it's difficult to. Think our system inside. Yeah, yeah, we have a perfect drawing. Very good. Can somebody sit on the other side, guys? Okay. What's the last thing? You break it, you buy it. So, <laughs> sorry? You break it, you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got the main sheet. Normally I have the Cunningham, which uh, goes, uh, the Cunningham is uh, um, actually... What's the basic for plastic? If you see, if you see this, uh, this uh, spinnaker sheet, then uh, it's uh, hard to, uh, to adjust the Cunningham. The spin locks make it easier, but normally the spin sheet goes under the Cunningham. And uh, I will show, I will send uh, Ain the drawing for a continuous Cunningham. So it's just endless and it doesn't stop. Mm. It's, it's a loop. Um, okay, so uh, let's prepare to tag. 
look uh, that we are about uh, on lane line. So I pleat the Cunningham, let go of it, I take over the sheet. Yeah. Then you do your part. Good. Yeah, thank you very much. Are you ready to check? Let's go. I steer, pull in, uh, pull in the, the, the... Well, this is not working now because it's cleating automatically, but uh, I have it in one hand, and when we slide in, I can actually adjust how much we uh, we want to release this one. You cleat this, take the stick like this, go to the other side. You look where you're going. You're still steering um, to bear down to increase pressure on the new tech. Go backwards. When I move backwards, I pull in this automatically. It's really hard to explain now because the seal doesn't move up, there's no pressure. But it is so much better than to first sit here and then think about, oh, I need to pull in the main. Uh, when you're sitting here anyway and you're moving backwards, you better use your body weight to pull it in, okay? Uh, take it into one hand, get the hook in, uh, get your butt outside and move like this. Cheat. Cunningham, and let's continue, and let's kill the rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, this is uh, pretty much the sequence. For the crew, I uh, did not have any uh, attention for you yet. It is really important in the sequence that, um, are you ready to tack? Okay, now I will not be joining you, but uh, okay, let's go. Uh, I got the sheet, you put the sheet in, we steer, we pull, yeah. It is really important that you can actually, when you, when you come in from here, you can actually also stand up and take an as much, as an as much, I mean my foot is still here, an as much uh, big step as you can to be as quick as possible on the other side, okay? And what a good, really good crews do actually is to go outside and just to be outside and hook yourself in while you're hanging on your arms like this for a second. Because it is extremely important to get the crew weight out so the skipper can pull in as much as you can. And the skipper has a little bit more work to do in the tech and it takes longer and cannot be as quick as a crew. Uh, on the other side, but that's one other thing uh, to take into consideration is that like in uh, this is done in the Olympics in the 49ers in the NACO 17 you go out like this on your arms and you go into peace. Think about the sequence, think about the steps and once you uh, once you have uh, got these steps right, um, there is one other way which uh, in, in these sort of conditions, when you are double trapping, uh, you can have a perfect tech. Uh, you can have a perfect tech with um, both first you go in, same sequence, eh? the tech and for the skipper and the crew is always the same. Both uh, skip. Uh, uh, both crew and skipper go in. When you go in and you're not uh, and you're not releasing the main sheet, the boat goes up. You're actually standing up, and it is really good to be trying this. So not on your knees, but standing up. And I would like to show it to you, but uh, we need a little bit more wind. Um, so there's both crew standing up. You actually take a big step. The sail while tacking this boom is coming to this side so you just have to duck that's it you pull in you go to this side take the hook uh, jump outside like i don't have a hook right now you jump outside it's a very spectacular tech but it's also uh, a very efficient tech and you cannot do it when it's super rough but in medium conditions this works really well because you are really sequenced with each other on your feet is when you can move the best and the quickest and instead of on, uh, instead of on your knees okay are you ready can you adjust your microphone can you adjust it
Let's go through this sequence. So from here to the beginning, yeah. This is uh, where the crew stands, eh? yeah. On the yeah. So a little bit to the back. I will give you the sheet, or you can grab it. Yeah. I will make sure that this is on the tramp. Uh, first I have to pull in. Yeah, you when you when you start attack, you push and pull. Like that. Yeah. Then like that. Yeah. Uh, wait a second. Uh, can we go a little bit back because this is uh, this is cleating now. Oh yeah. Uh, and you took it here, but uh, you better take it here. So you are in control about or letting go, mm -hmm. you know, just by releasing your hand or if you want to pull it. But if you take it here and you're moving back, you so cannot use your I'm body weight yeah. to pull it in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So you move back, pull in. And in the beginning, you all will be struggling with, okay, I'm pulling it in, but it's too much pressure. The boat's going up, then you have to let go, but uh, you will get, if you start doing it like this, <laughs> you will get the feel in how much you need to pull in by your body weight, because it's a simple movement. Okay, okay, from this side to the other side. Think, push, pull. So I have to take it from here. Yeah. time when I'm going out. You use your body weight, yeah. Okay. Hook. Like Perfect. It's Somebody a lot of steps in one sequence. Sorry? It's a lot of steps in one sequence. You know if you practice it it will yeah. uh, get easier and better. Uh, but uh, by doing this you are forcing yourself to uh, to think about your tech. You here. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, crew must uh, change it. Uh, drop. That gear is also from here. Sorry? Uh, no, I mean, uh, this must be up or, or down from this rubber. This one? Well, uh, normally we are into P somewhere here, mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter. All right. You know, it can be here, it can be here, what you want. As long as uh, before you tag, the skipper grabs it here, because uh, then uh, you avoid problems with the uh, with the short cord. Okay. Okay. Do we have another volunteer, guys? No, August. August? Yeah. Okay. You go into peace. You say, "Are we ready to tag?" Uh, you know, uh, we are going to tag. So, uh, okay, uh, make ready. I'll make sure that uh, the sheet is properly in. Yeah. You push and pull. Yeah. Wait a second, wait a second. If you move back, if you uh, grab it here, yeah. can you come back? If you grab it here, then you can use your body weight to, uh, it's not working right now, but okay. yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And the trick is going to be is if you move out and you have uh, the sheet and the, and, uh, the joystick in one hand, is uh, to not move the rudder while you're moving out, right? Okay. And while you're okay. sheeting in. Well, you're not sheeting in 
uh, when you move out. You already sheeted in okay. with your body movement going upwards. And you're balancing the boat when you're taking your weight out. Yeah. And now you see he's always in the wrong place right now. Too far ahead. He is a little bit too far ahead, yes. It depends on the wind, but your crew cannot stand there. If, when you're double trapezing with two guys outside, your right foot is at the stay. Yeah. It's strange, but uh, I also look always this uh, five centimeters, and we have to be like. If it's really light weather, then there is uh, less pressure, then you can move forward, right? Yeah. So keep on looking to the bow, but most of the times uh, I saw you guys standing too far to the front. Okay. So you have to get, it's, it's new, so you have to get used to be standing more backwards. Uh, but check it out, you know, okay. the, I, uh, we'll check it out. draw your own conclusions on the water eh, and learn yeah. together. Do we have anybody else, guys? Wants to try. You? Come on, let's go. I'll hold your catalog. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Yeah, just hold it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, about the jib and the jib is automatically trimmed eh, because it's the self-tacking jib. Mm -hmm. You know, it moves to the other side. When it's uh, tough conditions and you have the feeling that the tack um, didn't was not uh, executed properly. You can always check if the boat's turning correctly. If it's in, if it's head to wind, you can always take the jib for a second, like to help go to help the bow down when it's light weather. You know? Yeah. We are not. Uh, we uh, the more we adapt, the more we are open to anything that happens around us. The more, uh, the better the boat will sail in the end. Okay, yeah, you get the rope. Push, pull, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? Uh, move there. Uh, one second. You uh, well, you move the tiller because there's no water. But uh, you have your give me your hand. Yeah, like this. Okay. And now close it like that, and this as well. And now you can move. Uh, now you can move over the tiller. You have to get used to it, eh? So I will. I will be a little bit of. Uh, Pressure in the water with my uh, with my uh, okay and again to the other side. Okay. Well, that's because there's no real pressure at the moment, eh? But uh, the trick is, is that you sheet in when the crew moves out and you are moving backwards. That's where you sheet in. So you don't have to sheet in while you are moving out. But once you're out, you can give the sheet and it's the last little bit. And oh. 
Something happened to the mic. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Um, there is two really important, uh, two really important moments. One moment is you need to before you go to the tech, you need to release some of the main sheet. So the goal is not to have the main sheet tight all the time, right? Because the boat doesn't move um, through the wind very well when the main sheet is too tight. Because when you go from this tack into the next tack, you want the mainsail a little bit open. So you're releasing while coming in, but you are arranging it along the, along the tiller. Everybody understands? Then when you, uh, when you are, the wind is coming from this direction. So if the boat is head to wind, then there's no pressure on the lines. Everybody knows that. Eh? And that's a perfect moment to pull in and that it doesn't cost you any strength to pull in. Once the boat turns, uh, if this is head to wind, so the boat's like that. Once the boat is on course for upwind, suddenly the load on the sheet is very high. And that's where it's costing a lot of strength to pull it in. So the trick is going to be is to pull it in to sit here. So he's over there tacking, boat's going to, through the wind on course. Is to pull the main sheet in on the moment there is not a lot of load, but the load is increasing. Okay? That's going to be the trick. Okay. Now jibing with spinnaker and the crew. This is a lot of focus on the skipper. Okay guys, we're going downwind with the spinnaker on. You can take this away. The crew. Oh, you use it. Okay, it's, it's like this. Crew is in the in the trapeze of uh, of the skipper, mostly when you uh, are in a when you are in a in a in an Olympic course up and down. Um, I would on on my boat this foot strap actually sits here. So this is how we standardly do it to have a to have the crew standing as much to the back as possible. And this is the way a crew should be standing. So this strap should be sitting over my foot um, like this. That's why also we have this uh, little corner on the back of the boat to, uh, to be as far back, possibly back to the, um, on the back of the boat. So you have a uh, maximum writing moment backwards. So you're sailing along, sailing along. Uh, for the skipper, it's quite easy because the uh, skipper is sitting over there. So this sheet is on this side of the skipper. Um, I've seen people in the breeze yesterday standing here, which is uh, not favorable because what you get is you have to sail too low. You cannot get enough speed on the boat because if you head up to find more uh, pressure, more breeze, then uh, the boat wants to, uh, wants to dive. So I would really suggest that every crew will try to stand here on the back of the boat. And uh, there's even some crews that are really standing on the back of the boat towards the back. So not to the side like this, because nobody will be able to stand like this, but really to the back. Okay. Um, same principles as with uh, the explanation of the skipper going to the other side, really big steps on the tramp, because this is quite far from here to the new sheet, to the other side of the boat to get out again. Okay. So we're sailing, um, the crew has a perfect oversight over the course because you can see everything. You can see puffs, you can see the fleet. You have a much better view than the skipper that sits inside. Uh, if you decide to jibe, then the skipper goes like, okay, are you ready? And what I still do today is countdown. A simple countdown like three, two, one, and go. And the countdown can also be Okay, hold on, three, two, one, go. And on one, the crew is in. Okay? But you're using uh, the skipper's trapeze. 
using the skipper's trapeze. Yeah. yeah. And on uh, to get back to that, on one the crew is in. So are we ready to jibe? Yes, we are. Okay. Are we ready? Three, two. Crew comes in, pulls itself in through here, using also the load on the sheet. There's no load at the moment. But now the important part comes in. If your crew is extremely vulnerable in this process, I'm looking at the skippers, and the crew all know. Sorry. Well, the skipper sits here, so you just step uh, step around him, or you kick him, or <laughs> go away. <laughs> but I want to really talk to the skippers right now. Your crew is very vulnerable. We all had it that you're excited you uh, to uh, to go and uh, go into the jibe, or you have to make to the mark, or there's a boat coming. I don't care what reason it is, but you don't steer into the jibe until your crew is inside the boat. And inside the boat means here. This is inside the boat. All the skippers, is this clear? Yes. If you've never crewed, then you don't know. But you just have to listen now and accept. This is inside the boat. One step back, this is not inside the boat. If the skipper decides, okay, you know, let's try because the crew's coming in. And you do this, the crew, you know, is being launched to the outside of the boat. You crash, you burn, everything. And I think it's sometimes dangerous in a big fleet when there's still uh, 100 boats coming, when your crew's in the water and it's shit, you know, dangerous. So to go back to that, the crew, okay, ready to go. Um, here we go, three, two, one. And if your crew is not in at one, you don't steer, okay? You don't steer, you wait for your crew to be in. Uh, this is not, uh, not loaded right now, but uh, obviously the boat starts to turn. When you're on your feet like this, you can be on your knees or on your feet. Flat water, I like to be on, uh, on the feet. Um, you take this uh, new sheet from this side because you are already here. You can release this sheet from that side it is automatically going, you're moving. It's, it's, it's impossible to pull it in right now. Moving to this side of the boat, you go out, take the sheet, and you're on the new, new tack in the jibe. Same principle uh, from this side to the other side. Okay, we want to jibe, yes, we're ready. Okay, we go in three, two, one. You don't steer until the crew is really in. Yeah, is in. You see that I can hold the sheet tight by stretching my arm to the outside. You take the sheet. If the boat turns right now, then the, this sheet will go the other way. Take the sheet over here. Put the, put the hook in. Tension uh, this. And one last bit is if the crew is in the, the foot strap, you say, okay, I'm good. Or foot strap. You let the skipper know that the skipper can push. Okay? And, uh, one question. And uh, she is uh, this side, side of, of the feet or, or this side? It doesn't matter the way it works. Normally, uh, normally it sits here cutting in the skipper's side, mm -hmm. in the life jacket. But there's also a crew standing so far in the behind that they are sheeting from this side. Okay. But that's something that I wouldn't worry about. I would worry about making the boat fast. Okay. So Volunteers, guys. How you put it here? This this well, you take this one, you put it in these holes, and you put this one, and you put it in here. Yes, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. This and that. Then yeah. <coughs> and we need another crew as a volunteer. Your crew? What happened to your crew? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've well, got another harness somewhere. I don't know. What do you do with the main sheet? 
you let go a little bit and flip it or how do you be like uh, I try to be uh, consistent in uh, when uh, when the boat is switching course when we when I pull on the rudder to jive then I release let's say 15 centimeters mm -hmm. cleat it really important to cleat it you know cleat and then go to the other side and then when it takes some time before the boat gets going again and that's where you pull in your 15 centimeters again mm -hmm. yeah okay. yeah uh, one question uh, Maybe it's we have easy. We, you have one second. We first do the crew because he's uh, ready. We uh, we do it in a. Keep your question. Sorry. Okay. Ready. Yeah. No, but really on the back. Yeah. This uh, footstep is a little bit in the way, but if you have your <laughs> like this, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what will happen, uh, what you try to avoid, is that you will fall to the back, right? That's something mm -hmm. that you want to avoid. So what you do is you keep this one, you're already automatically doing it bent, and this one straight, and you put your foot like that. Mm -hmm. This is the way. Yep. This is how you stand. Okay? Okay, are you ready to jibe? Yes. Okay, here we go. Three, two, <laughs> one. I think uh, you should start moving at three, actually, to be yeah. in at one. All right. Yes? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, we do it again. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready to jibe? Yes. Okay, here we go in three, two, one. Yeah. Sheet runs out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I understand uh, at the moment it feels comfortable to have your foot on the back beam, mm -hmm. but this is really the place you want to have both foot uh, when it's windy, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, be careful. Yeah. If you hang up, be careful that you don't fall between the boat uh, between the hulls, because that's the only thing that can happen. Okay, can we do that again? And now uh, August uh, can do the can do the. Okay, are you ready to jibe? Okay, and are you ready to jibe? Is not we are jibing. No, are you ready to jibe? You know, it's a simple way of communication between two human beings on the boat. The boat is going to be turning. Okay. <laughs> it wants to go out, eh? Okay. Yep. This is something we can uh, we can um, work on onto the water today. Eh? I hope there will be some uh, somewhere wind. Okay, next through. Your question. Okay. Uh, sometimes with uh, light wind, maybe better to release early the, the sheet, or spinnaker sheet, to go over slightly and uh, quickly. Because if you, if you uh, hold the pressure all the time and the jeep, it takes seconds to, 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 to spin up and go over. So There's only way. only one perfect timing to release the spinnaker or to pull in the spinnaker. The spinnaker is following the boat, okay. right? So um, you want to keep your spinnaker as long as possible in the right shape to be moving forward, even in the jibe. So when the when the, this is the wind, right, and uh, the boat is jibing from this tack to this tack, then you uh, in in this uh, bend you want to have the spinnaker, the the sheet where the where the clue is. You want it to go around the forestay of the jib and then into the new sheet. 
that's what you want yes but and nothing you... else okay. so whatever you think that's what you want okay. and uh, if you want to keep it in or out you sort it out but this is the perfect jibe you know two people handling the boat with the spinnaker flying around the the jib and you know that the spinnaker can, can also go around itself and then you have to pull in the sheet and then it first has to go around that shit okay the perfect jibe is like me poof you can imagine eh? some wind coming it's not tension all the time the jib never come over the, the, the spinnaker spinac never come over the jib you should release in the proper position so it's uh, coming slightly over yeah yeah correct Let me. but uh, i'd rather have you standing here eh? yeah. <laughs> the chicken wire there. <coughs> the chicken wire uh, the chi this actually we never we don't have one on the boat um, because we're not chickens. <laughs> no, we don't have one. But, but um, for long distance sailing, this is really nice because if the skipper is in the foot strap, then the crew can do this. If you're double trapezing in the reach or with the spinnaker up and it's rough stuff, and the boat goes in one time and you stay here together, then you don't capsize. If you go forward, you know, you're lost. Uh, but we don't have one. We don't, we don't use it actually. We just have the foot strap. Is there any more cruise, guys? How did it go? Okay, okay. So um, I have to keep it tight uh, until I'm in, yeah? Yes. Yeah. And, and you are actually pulling yourself in. Also, you are pulling yourself in... Uh, um, yeah, the rudder. Yeah. You're pulling yourself in onto the spinnaker sheet. Yeah. And by having this, you are, you are actually using the load on the sheet to pull yourself in and to keep yourself in. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the sheet, yeah. Okay, are you ready to jibe? Ready. Okay, let's go in three, two, one. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it is, um, you, when you are sailing downwind, it is better to hook in and then step out mm -hmm. instead of hanging on the hook and trying to hook it in because this is pulling you yeah, this okay. is pulling you this way mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. going to be very hard to uh, to get it done so we go to the other side are you ready to jibe ready. three two one oh. crew is in when you uh, one second as a crew when you are moving out you can have the sheet uh, here and try to pull in the main uh, the, the the spinnaker sheet or you can grab it here mm -hmm. and just move your body weight out to pull the spinnaker in mm -hmm. because we all know after four races on a day you're tired use your weight use your mass to actually lean backwards and get the spinnaker in okay okay now it's just going to move actually shortly yeah. sorry but now it won't uh, lose Oh, well, you can, uh, if you, if, you know, the, the spinnaker isn't that hard <coughs> mm -hmm. during the jibe to pull in, but uh, you don't want to do it like this because then you're not able to, to you know, you can pull, and but you can slide, you mm -hmm. can pull, you can slide. Okay, basically I grab from the hair and go in. Really? No, I don't know. <laughs> no, to go in you mean? Uh, no. Uh, this, he means going to the other side. Yes. And I'm going in, I grab here, yeah. I won't lose it, I'm going. Yeah, and that's if you, if, you, if you go in here, and you grab the spinnaker here, mm -hmm. and you take this all...
say, I mean, all the way here, then you're pulling it in already. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, yeah. Instead of instead of first going to the other side and then starting to pull in, you know, that's the wrong way. The slow way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, holding uh, uh, crew holding uh, this uh, this rope. Uh, do they hold it like so, like this and this? this yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's like a, a a good way of holding it. Uh, there's also crews that have it around their thumb to uh, to use this, <coughs> or with uh, two hands. You know, it doesn't matter really. Okay. This is this is how I do it. So yeah, if you have to, yeah, to yeah. Okay, guys, any questions on the tacks and the jibes? Uh, Dugger boards, up, down, downwind. Huh? In the downwind? No, I mean, wh when, uh, if, you, if you take the mark when you, what's the sequence of, uh, yeah, uh, taking them up and... And where, you mean at the top mark going into the downwind? Shall we uh, go into the, because uh, then we also can move on to explanation of uh, this afternoon. Shall we go in? With the, perfect. The sequence uh, of going from the upwind into the downwind. And we're talking, uh, we're talking if there's 15 knots of breeze, um, which is, uh, what is it? Seven and a half, eight meters per second. And um, there's a lot of stuff happening. And yesterday I had uh, a talk with, uh, with one team and uh, we will go through it uh, step by step. If, uh, if we have the wind coming from here, then we have uh, the uh, upwind mark here. We, have, uh, we don't do this in the practice races because we don't have enough buoys. We have a little spreader, this is a spreader. It is mark one and um, we are we can approach the mark one uh, on starboard side uh, what we always try to avoid in racing is to come from this side really close to the mark because it is uh, very easy to get caught by a big fleet coming from two sides <coughs> and uh, coming into trouble we think it's better that if you approach a mark from uh, from the port side is that you stay close stay away from uh, from the mark a little bit further and do the last little bit around uh, that's but that's basic basics um, situation one we are uh, here uh, let's call it a situation a we still have uh, what is it uh, four uh, 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 let's say five boat lengths to go to uh, before we reach this mark we um, um, probably some of you have seen that we, we have a little rope that we can pull on the trampoline so we can get the lured uh, dagger board up with a little rope N we don't have to actually go there we can pull on the rope so the dagger board goes up during sailing upwind it's a very nice system because one of the important things that you uh, we call it the up fucker <laughs> uh, it's a really important things because when it's 50 knots of breeze and you want to go into the reach, and this can be quite tricky with high seas, but most important, if you want to go fast immediately in the downwind when the spinnaker is up, then uh, both the dagger boards need to, be, uh, need to be a little bit up. And in general, on the infusion, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, 40 to 50 centimeters that you have both boards up and that you seal the boat symmetrically. So uh, there is a symmetry to, uh, to, uh, to the boards. Uh, if you have the other one on the leeward side 40 centimeters up, then you have uh, the windward one also 40 centimeters up. And why are you pulling your board always up? It is uh, simply drag resistance through the water and that's speed or costing speed. Um, and it is a uh, writing moment. Um, if these boards are down, you just have too much pressure to be sailing quick. And uh, the quickest way <coughs> from, uh, from this mark, around this mark to here, is when you actually can build a parent wind. 
the wind that you build yourself by going fast. And if you have your boards too deep, you will never get there. So boards up and the boat will start to feel free. Free to move and free to go quick. Free, free to steer the boat up to catch a new puff and to bear down again. Okay. Um, but this sequence from here to there, um, I would say that uh, we, uh, we, uh, we actually pull the dagger board up before we reach the mark. We can do it from trapeze, from the windward side. Um, when we close towards uh, the, the, let's say, two, lit, two boat lengths zone, this is B, um, we first with two persons round the mark uh, like that. Uh, but the crew is holding the jib in this jib sheet. Is holding the jib sheet already in his hands. That means that just before we reach this uh, turnaround, the crew has the jib sheet in his hands ready to release, right? Which means control. Um, the main sheet already went from the front to the, to the skipper. So uh, the, the crew has the jib sheet and the skipper has the main sheet. Um, when it's extreme weather, like uh, 25 knots or more, then you can also think about, okay, we are going to be reaching for a little while. It's very windy. There's a lot of waves. Let's put the traveler out for five centimeters. Yeah, everybody, that's, that's all stuff you can think on on the water because of safety. Because um, if you want to win the race, you first must be able to finish. So with capsizing is not quick. So safety for all. Safety in terms of winning the race. Um, so main sheet in the hands of the skipper. Jib in the hands of the crew. Jib sheet release at the rounding. To, uh, to set the sails for this short little reach. Your jib, uh, you can do a couple of things. You can release it for the reach, but you don't want it to flap, but you want it to be ready or, or already for the downwind. So I would say you would release your jib so the top is a little bit too open and the bottom is perfectly aligned, okay? Um, I would say that if this is 50 meters, that halfway with 15 knots of breeze, 25 meters, which is five boat lengths, is that uh, the crew goes in, um, crew in. Um, what the crew first does in the reach is uh, Cunningham release, click Cunningham release. You only have to do uh, maybe uh, a 30 centimeter cunning and release to be safe with your mast. While, while you are at the, the pit of the boat, you can uh, release the mast rotation. So the mast, uh, mast rotates outside. Uh, in the meantime, um, uh, the skipper can actually, when the boat's moving here, when the boat's moving here, the tack line of the spinnaker can be pulled by the skipper, which is still in trapeze. It's a really easy place to reach for everybody on the boat. It's automatically there. Skipper pulls it to the front, so the crew doesn't have to do that because when the crew is in, doing the Cunningham, doing the mass rotation, setting the jib right, uh, and also pulling up the windward dagger board because that's somewhere needs to be done when the, when the crew goes in. So it is... Uh, Daggerboard, Cunningham, a rotator, and that's when you arrived here, okay? Everybody seen, uh, this still sounds logical. But uh, yesterday what we talked about is the before you make this turn to the downwind to, let's say, hoist the spinnaker, the skipper needs to be in right before the turn. Never ever you see us or me standing in trapeze when I am bearing down into the downwind. And why is that? You are coming out of the reach and by having our body weight out, 
we, uh, we, uh, we create writing moments, we go fast. If, um, if the crew goes in, pressure increases. So I have to release the main sheet, right? Sensible. If I stay in trapeze and uh, bear even further down, then the speed will increase. But uh, for a skipper, it is really unstable to stay on the boat. So to avoid that, right before the, this turn, skipper comes in. And I've shown you that uh, when I come in, having the main sheet and the tiller in one hand, when you move in, you can actually, you, when, when I move in, when my hand's moving in, I have it here uh, on the tiller and uh, the main sheet like this. Uh, I come in, but I can even more increase by extending my arm. So no weight outside the boat anymore. I'm releasing the main sheet. You are uh, uh, very determined to steer the boat from the wind, uh, sorry, to the wind, from the wind, no hesitations. The more wind there is, uh, if, you have, if you hesitate of steering really into the downwind, you are getting yourself into problems. If you decided to bear off into the downwind, you do it. No hesitation, okay? Important that skipper, <coughs> skipper in. Um, while the skipper goes in and the boat goes down into this little S, uh, this is the perfect, uh, the perfect uh, place to start hoisting the spinnaker for the crew. And the, when it's really rough uh, conditions and really a lot of wind and big waves and choppy water, it is important that the crew sits on one foot and on one knee to be stable and to still be mobile in what's going on on the boat. I've seen that some of you have the cleats somewhere up here. I think you have uh, your placed your cleat very high. Um, but when it's calm water like this, I think the best way is to stand on your feet really secure and to find balance into the line that you're pulling in. And this is the way you're pulling in. So it's a kind of swimming that you do and you don't miss, uh, you don't miss a, a pool. Uh, a very easy thing to do is to make a mark on your uh, spinnaker line on shore, right here, right now, is you just uh, take a, a permanent marker and you just go for that little black or red spot on your marker. So you always know marker is not there, so the spinnaker is not up because it's so shitty to have your spinnaker not completely pulled up, you know, when you're in the downwind, you're into peace, you look outside like, okay, this much and the boat feels shit. You know, the boat just doesn't really go. It needs to be tight. So put a little marker there. So you're always searching for the mark, click, you know, marker there, cleat it and uh, get into trapeze. Um, do you really see me, when you have some speed, winds like this, and you really see make, uh, make me a big S, it makes life so extremely easy to really go deep, get the spinnaker up. I mean, you can, anybody can do it. A five year old can pull the spinnaker because the boat's moving with the wind. So there's none pressure in the, in the, in the kite. It's so easy to pull it up and down. That's the same uh, for both. So when the spinnaker is up and I would say uh, here somewhere, the skipper already has, you know, he has not, uh, not a lot to do besides controlling the boat and the main sheet and the traveler and the steer. You, the skipper already grabbed the, the sheet from the spinnaker, waits until the, 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 the crew uh, says, okay, up, you know, it's there, it's at the mark. You already pull in the first, let's say, one and a half meter. The crew is, you know, hoisting here. The spinnaker sheet goes towards the, the skipper. You just have to grab the spinnaker uh, sheet and move backwards, sit, hook in, get out. But that first one and a half meter that's already being pulled in by the skipper saves 10 times flapping. And the 10 times flapping is five places at the world, right? It's that simple. So here, uh, speed up. Then uh, I should uh, skipper.
skip Rashida in Spi. Uh, you steer up, and while you're steering up towards the wind, the crew is moving its weight outside of the boat, uh, gets the trapeze uh, hook, steps outside, and you're in business, and boom. And the next thing you will be doing is like, okay, are you ready to jive? You know, in three, two, you don't steer as being a skipper until your crew's in, in. I mean, you need to be sure that the crew's in because uh, it's, a, it's a liability for, uh, for, every, for the complete boat if, uh, if it's not. I don't think I can tell a lot more about this. <laughs> Is this sequence clear, guys? Do you have any comments on it or maybe questions? Yeah, not uh, yeah. not Does this. Does it change anything, or you think the? Uh, well, of course it changes uh, things a lot because uh, you know you don't have the time to have the crew. You know you have less time to actually prepare everything. So uh, if you don't have the spreader mark, as this is called, this spreader mark uh, came into play because the fleets got so big in high performance sailing. Is that? If you have a hundred boats going around this buoy and there's people pulling in a spinnaker and there's still boats coming up wind, there were big collisions. So that's the reason why to spread, her, it, uh, to spread the fleet a little for safety reasons. But uh, it makes things different. And uh, then you just have to, have to all do this sequence in like one second. <laughs> then it will take more time to get it right. But uh, the sequence, the steps are the same, only closer. So what, what steps do you move forward before the boat comes back to land? How do you get the boat back to land? Do you have any steps? Um, the daggerboard. Daggerboard. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. when you come on. Power daggerboard in port. Um, it doesn't matter. Both daggerboards need to go up. Too. Then it uh, has to go, and then it has to come up later, you know. Okay. Then you have to fit in pulling uh, the leeward daggerboard somewhere else. You, ha it, you need to have to, you need to pull it up. Otherwise, you're not quick enough in a, in a, in a, in a competitive field. <coughs> because the rest around you <coughs> has pulled it up. And when you are overpowered in a, in a let's say, a world or a Europeans, then you're slow. So uh, the lure daggerboard, I, would, I was going to explain that if you sit on port and you are attacking here and you still have, let's say, uh, you know, 150 meters to go, and uh, you're attacking here and you're going on to this uh, port, I would say that uh, before you attack, the crew goes in, uh, pulls up the daggerboard on the uh, windward side, which becomes the leeward side, and this little 150 meters you do uh, with the daggerboard up, uh, you know, if, the, if your windward daggerboard is still in, then you at least have the lower daggerboard already up. And if you, you know, you have to take everything into account. Hello. Okay. Um, we spoke yesterday already a little bit about, uh, about um, approaching the gate, right? That you uh, need to be in time, is that you can, uh, I will repeat that. Uh, in, um, today I really want to see that uh, if you go into the downwind and you're approaching the gate or the mark, um, you know, put the daggerboards down in time so you have enough time. Put the ma uh, pull the mass rotation in, uh, get some cutting ammo, make sure that the jibs, uh, jib sheets are fleeted already, and then lower the spinnaker. In yesterday's afternoon racing, I still saw some panicking because uh, y some of you were waiting until the last moment to do everything, you know, and that's impossible. And the more you plan, the more you think ahead, the more you uh, um, uh, you know, see the see the gate coming, and you still uh, you want to keep the spinnaker up as long as you possibly can, and those daggerboards down with the waves, with the wind, they don't really care. 
So think about it. Try to pre-think every step. Okay. And also, what uh, when we uh, foresee uh, a, a hard situation with the first upwind mark going into the spinnaker uh, leg, um, we talk about it. What we will be doing, you know, al although we've done it a thousand times, we still talk about okay. This is what we're going to do, not in detail, but in general. We already know uh, before, we, uh, before we go around the mark, we already have, uh, have, you know, if this is, let's say, the bottom mark of, uh, sorry, the bottom of, uh, of the field, of the area where we, uh, where we sail in, we already know in the upwind what we will be doing here. We decided here that we are going to be jibing here or that we will um, uh, proceed. So we're not deciding it at the buoy, we already decided it here. And plans can change, you know, in five seconds, but uh, at least the communication is clear, which is really important. <laughs> okay, guys, the, this afternoon's uh, sessions. No, I can take this away? I think so, huh? This afternoon sessions will be uh, a little bit more complicated than we had uh, so far. But for me, it seems uh, the mark position, you, you're using the quick release. Yes. Are you guys using that as well? Yes. Just once a year. <laughs> Otherwise, we are using the the, uh, the switch one on the on the on the hull. Which one? We have the both sides on the hull. We can just pull. Oh, the fine tune yeah, of the mass rotation. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we will have. Um, okay, we've got the three buoys. Uh, the plan is to have uh, a really short um, racing area. So instead of uh, the length that you are used in racing or the length that we used yesterday, this will be, uh, this will be as extremely small. And um, we will not only be doing um, practicing on a short course, but uh, and now uh, you have to be very uh, focused uh, when you race. What I will be asking you is to make at least five tacks in the upwind and four jibes in the downwind. Okay, so uh, this is one, two, three, four, five. Is that one, two, three, four, five? Five. Five tacks and four jibes, okay? So one, two, three, four, and then you, you can actually do more, but a minimum of four jibes and five tacks in the upwind. Is that correct? Five tacks? Six. Six. Five exclusive. <laughs> one, <laughs> two, three, four. So four tacks, four jibes. Okay. Because the to, uh, to keep it simple, because uh, you will lose uh, start count, but a minimum of four tacks and four jibes. Um, we are with, uh, with, uh, with enough boats. It's a small space. You have to respect the rules. You have to respect that we don't want any damage on any boat. Uh, why are you guys looking at each other? It's an inside joke. Okay, respect. <laughs> each other um, and we will do this a couple of times i suggest that we do five of these uh, practice races with three laps okay so we do five uh, sorry four tacks four jibes minimum and we do three laps as always the same okay and um, this will be uh, the yellow buoys. I will try to form a gate with the wind. Uh, this is the upper mark. It's go going to be really close together. Um, and 
what we try to do is to force you to implement this, uh, this uh, tech session that we had on the boat. It's not about, it's really not about winning this, uh, this event, it's really about the exercise. And that is super important. Uh, nobody cares if you become last or first. Do the exercise, uh, four techs, four jibes. That's um, exercise number one. It's the forced jibes and techs. Okay? And then for the last little bit, we will do uh, a race, which is the final of the final races. We do a normal three minute start, three laps, and uh, then I really want to see, I will be placing this buoy uh, in a normal length of a normal race, and I really want to see the progression that I've been seeing in the last two days from you guys. Um, I think you really make big steps. I know that's a lot, of, a lot of information that we talked about and you have a lot of questions, but in the race of the race, we will, uh, we will uh, see the winner of the weekend.